Hey there, I'm Dracker TD. We're going to play video games because that's what you do on Twitch. So yeah, I'm probably just going to be playing a bunch of Sega Model 3 games. Hey Scott, good to see you in here. So yeah, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just going to play a bunch of Sega Model 3 games probably. I might hop over to the original Daytona, but probably not. It doesn't play ball with the streaming software. So... Select four. But yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, so I'm just gonna hop into... This is a Le Mans 24. Which is a very, very... Well, pretty obscure uh, racing game. We're going to play as a secret character. Because I'm legally obliged to. I'm also going to get the acceleration buttons messed up at least once because I was sticking around with a Namco System 22 emulator and so now I've got all the inputs mixed up. So yeah, this is Le Mans 24. It's based on the actual French racing event of the same name. Uh, obviously with a Sega arcade spin on it. It's never been ported to home consoles in any form, like most Model 3 games. And... Uh, it's pretty fun. It's a bit. Some of the drifting controls and all that are a bit janker, but for the most part, I think it's a decently fun game, and it's not got the biggest learning curve in the world uh, because the drifting is very much automatic. It's like if you twist, you're gonna do a drift. I say twist. That's because I'm on the easy con. The only thing is, it's while it's uh, the drifting mechanics and all that are pretty easy to get to grips with. Uh, the computer drive incredibly fast and it's basically impossible to beat without spending at least one extra credit. I don't see if I had this machine set to free player mode, I'm machine, it's an emulator. I thought I had the uh, game set to free player mode, but I don't, so oh well. Yeah, uh, this uh, this course, I'm not sure if it's on the other courses, has a... Uh, has like the uh, Michelin signs and all that, and uh, the billboards all flip to the Project Sonic logo. So that's why. Uh, so I assume that's kind of a, like a hint at hey, Sonic's in this game. So yeah. Hey, the ninth player. Good to have you. Oh hey, EAP. Hello. So yeah, in terms of like getting first and all that I'm not particularly good at this game I don't think I've ever got first like not on this track anyway there's someone on the uh, supermodel which is the emulator the forums who did manage to get first place but it's like I'm, I'm not good at arcade games I like arcade games but I'm bad at them typically I'll hover around sixth place for a bit and then after you continue at least once, because in this game, if you time out, you don't just game over. It gives you the option to just continue the race. It's it's kind of it's probably one of the more accessible uh, Sega racing games, which is why it's a shame it never got ported. I assume because of the licensing. Oops. Whoa. And he's on fire. Uh, one of my French Twitter followers actually informed me that throughout the Le Mans 24, the uh, drivers change. So if you hop into a pit stop with Sonic, the driver of this little buggy will actually change. It changes to some weird dog thing. And I'm not sure if it's from another game or something, or if they say like a company mascot or something. But I've never seen it anywhere else. Kind of reminds me of Zoom's mascot, Neko. So what I'm probably going to do is I'll play this, then hop over to... Uh, I might do the advanced course. I've never actually done any courses besides this course, because usually when I was trying to do... Usually when I play this game, I'm just doing the, um, what should I call it? I'm just doing it, doing it to showcase the fact Sonic's in it. So I just picked the beginner course, because it's the one I know. 
I think I have played on the expert course before, I just don't do it very often. You'll notice there's a lot of on-fire cars. We're getting to the end of the race now. Whoa, second place. Not bad. So now there's an extra race, which is with a uh, like some weird prototype Porsche. So yeah, this is the Golf Porsche, I guess. It's like a prototype vehicle. Something kind of similar is in Sega Touring Car. You can unlock uh, the Sega Racing prototype, which is basically this broken car that can go insanely fast. And yeah, This is basically the boss race, but it's not much of a boss race, to be honest. It's actually pretty easy. Once it gets on a straightaway, it just slows down dramatically and you can just cut ahead of it. Isn't it great to have a Sonic uh, game where the uh, Sonic and the Michelin Man co-star? As far as I'm aware, a lot of the uh, company logos on the side are all, are all real companies. Like, obviously I recognise Kenwood, but it's like... Yeah, view change. Just in case you want to see a different view in the vehicle. Every Sega game has this, but it's like, it's neat. Wow, have I seriously already left him in the dust? Huh, that's the earliest I've done it. This was a good run. This was actually a really good run. When was the last time a Sega game had brand or product placement? Um, well, Yakuza. Yakuza has a lot of product placement. Um, I know Outrun 2 has a bit of product placement. I should play Outrun 2, actually. I really love that game. I just can't remember if I've got uh, any of my controllers configured for it right now. Actually, I should try day, uh, Outrun with the Niji comp. I think in terms of games that feature Sonic, well, I guess Yakuza technically does feature Sonic, he's on the arcade coin machines, but, um, yeah. Hey, Mr. Cat, nice of you to join us. That is an excellent question, Mr. Cat. I'm not sure when I will die. You know, I just realized, why the hell am I watching this? There we go. Hey, not bad. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, I probably will die the day before Mika Expo comes to Europe. Oh yeah, the Miku and Sonic Mania mod. Yeah, that was I did a dev commentary of that last uh, yesterday. It was really fun to work on. Right, we're gonna try the medium course. I don't recall actually trying this like course. Right, just trying to do the Sonic code. Pain in the ass to do. Especially with the con needing to be twisted and all that. Basically, I have to tap the accelerator by putting it on my chest. Okay, this looks familiar. I think there's some issues with the music on this emulator, I think it plays kind of out of sequence. I do think there's a fix for it, but I can't remember what it is, besides just updating the emulator, which granted I haven't done in like half a year.
Yeah, this looks very familiar, doesn't it? I assume there's going to be some kind of difference. Oh wait, this is a lap race, so I guess I just have to complete three laps. Probably about what I did with anyone. I know the expert course is definitely different, as usual with Sega games, it's like a run through a city or something. Sega really like making cities the expert courses. Actually in this game it's more of like a rural village. Which Sega Rally did anyway. Oh yeah, I heard that rumour no, on 4chan about Sonic Heroes remake. I don't know, it sounded stupid to me. Like, it just kind of seemed like, like, especially when at the end it says, there's an arcade version of Sonic Mania. That just seems like someone trying vaguely to understand Sega of Japan's business without actually understanding it. They're not going to do an arcade version of Sonic Mania because they'd have to do some weird Mega Play shit with it. And... The other thing was a Sonic Gacha game. I don't see the point. Gacha games are big in Japan, Sonic is not big in Japan. It would be kind of pointless. It's probably the most realistic thing on that list of rumours, but it's like... It just seems like some fanboy who wanted to, who wants a Sonic Heroes remake and threw in a bunch of shit to try and make it seem legit. More so, I just don't want to believe it because... Fuck Sonic Heroes. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Sonic Runners was basically gotcha. The problem with an easy con is because you're pressing down the uh, accelerator buttons for so long, your finger absolutely goes numb. That's just that's the problem. It's just not very comfortable to actually use in racing games. I wish there was like a better solution. Besides, outside of just buying a wheel with pedals. Because that shit is expensive. Though the Nishikons are pretty expensive nowadays. They like run up like 30, 40 quid. I got this one for like less than 20. Thank you CEX for actually being useful for once. I think there's actually a few hidden cars in this game. Sonic isn't the only one. There's like a hidden livery for one of the other cars. I think the Porsche. I'm not sure if you can play as the boss car. That would be pretty cool. Probably can through hacking. Oh yeah, Sonic was all over the old F1 races. Even had a Sonic Trover. I think uh, Senna won that. It's funny, I like, uh, I like driving games and stuff, but I don't actually watch much racing. It's weird, CEX aren't usually great for prices, but I have found some really good deals in there. The other week I saw Beat Mania PS1 in there for like 10 quid with the turntable controller, which was pretty crazy. And again, I got the Nijicon for 18 quid, which is really good for a Nijicon. Fun fact, if you get an A rank, you can actually move the camera around those, uh, ranking girls. So, yeah. You just use a steering wheel to zoom in and around them. Because Easter eggs. Weird ones. I've never actually done it, granted. My driving isn't good enough. Once again, why am I watching this credit sequence? We get it. Right, I don't think I've ever actually beaten the expert race. I'll, I, one time I just spent time driving around to try and find all the easter eggs on the signs, and uh, there weren't any. Okay then, we're playing a Sonic on the final track. After this, I will probably hop over to Daytona USA too. Three, 
A game I love, but I'm terrible at. So essentially, this is just a practice stream. This is another lap race. At least there's a change of scene, huh? A dramatic one of that. Oh. No. Oh. I can't believe Sonic's fucking dead. Speedrunning this game. I can barely beat this game, let alone speedrun it. And also, I wouldn't be allowed, I probably would, I think the Porsche is the fastest car. So I couldn't even use Sonic if I wanted to go for gold. I just play Sonic because he's Sonic. Oh. I don't think there's anything actually interesting on the signage in this level. It's just mostly, um, like, coffee chains and stuff. Again with the crashing, I can not do herpins for sure. And that's a consistent thing, I can't do them in Sega Rally either. Sega Rally 2 is, uh, even on the easiest difficulty, I can barely make it to the final level, let alone beat it. Which is a shame, because I really do love Sega Rally. I used to be able to beat Sega Rally 2, I just got worse. Weird, because I have the Nijik on now. Oh yeah, I'm using automatic. I've just never bothered with um I have gear shifting set up and I use it in Daytona USA too. I just don't use it here for some reason. Ow. Again. It's probably it's probably faster for me to just hit that at this point. Mr. Cat, I gave up getting an A rank on this a long ass time ago. At this point, it's just a ch chance of am I going to actually finish? I can't remember if the lap races do the endurance thing where you can insert another credit. I do like that train running overhead, that's cool. Well, he crashed, so. Yeah. Oh, I actually did it. So yeah, there we go. I didn't even get on the rankings for that one. <laughs> but yeah, that was Le Mans 24. I'm just going to quickly hop over and change the game. Uh, shouldn't take a second. I actually set up custom shortcuts for all of these games now with their own icons and everything. They look like actual PC programs. Hooray! Eats his back. Okay, it's Daytona USA. I am absolutely terrible at this game. I still love it, but I'm terrible at it. Alright then. 
Who's ready to see how not to drift? I probably should have looked up a video before I did this stream because I can never remember where to turn. I actually have the official guidebook for this game saved to my computer. Most of it's in Japanese, but you can probably, I think you can read like the gear shifts and all that. What you need to do though. Shell Red. So, yeah, Daytona USA 2 is a very fun game. I'm just terrible at it. Yeah, there's GameWorks advertising the... In the uh, Power Edition, I think it's been removed. I think it's just been replaced with a set normal Sega sign. However, in Power Edition, if you change some settings in the emulator so that the clipping distance is changed, you can actually see that there's a hidden Dreamcast logo underneath there. Which is pretty fun, huh? Uh, presumably it was supposed to be a hint that they were going to port this to Dreamcast, but then obviously this game never got ported to Dreamcast. Whoa, spinning, spinning, spinning. Okay, well we thought that off. I think I always scare the shit out of me. I used to play this game on a um, whatchamacallit. Uh, there was a, a holiday spot that I used to go to in Blackpool that had this game and I just played it every single time I went and then they removed it. They probably have Daytona USA 3 now which I haven't actually been able to try out. I know that obviously the game got leaked but um, yeah I should have just played on automatic to be honest. Probably would have been better for my uh, sanitor. Well, fun fact: the uh, that turn there, it's actually depending on how you hit it, it's actually fast. Oops, shit. It's actually faster to crash into it than just take the corner. I believe the uh, Marubaku uh, guys who did the guide videos for this game. Well, there you go. There's my amazing skills. Yeah, the uh, guys who did the main video guides for this game, uh, they actually just take the hit on the wall because it's faster in one of the levels. I've beaten this in first, this level in first before. It's on my uh, YouTube. Yeah, there is some uh, emulation glitches. I have no idea how I'm gonna do. I'm still kind of adjusting to the uh, to the uh, Nijicon, so that's my excuse for that. Fun fact, Sonic is in the texture data for this game at all times, and I don't know why. You can see, like, textures of, like, his gloves or something. I think... Okay, I have a hypothesis. You know how Sonic's a secret character in Le Mans? Part of me wonders if there's a secret car in this, and it's Sonic. Because every Sega game seems to have a secret car in it. And also, Sonic was a cameo in the original Daytona, so it makes sense to include him somewhere in here. But I've had a look around the um, trap mode and everything, I can't see him anywhere. But it's just weird because he's in the texture data at all times. Like along with the heads up display and stuff. Oh 
Whoa. To be honest, it was probably just that he was a test texture, but it'd be cool if he was in there somewhere and we just haven't found him yet. Like, the Le Mans Sonic thing was really heavily unknown until, ironically, I went out there and was like, hey, look, Sonic's in Le Mans. And then people were like, wait, what? And now he's, the model for it has actually been ripped on the uh, model's resource site. It was actually my friend Tepid Snake who dug out how to... Um, Unlock Sonic in Le Mans. I just ended up doing it and recording it. Ah, shit. Well, at least I actually beat the level that time. Your place, ninth. Game I should probably remap the gear shifting, to be honest. Now, list your name with the other champion. Team, team. Team. Well, at least I was first on the rankings. Just for shits and giggles, we're going to do the expert course. And by do the expert course, I of course mean we're not going to do the expert course. We're going to fail amazingly at the expert course. It's funny because I like all of these games. I'm just terrible at them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know what's going on with the flickering, but something's going on with the flickering. Uh, that doesn't usually happen. Okay, yeah, this game's glitching out now. I think that one outrun machine in Blackpool has just kind of cursed me now. Funny you should mention Sega Rally too, because guess what's next? Whoa, there we go. I used to go to Blackpool basically every year on like a little mini holiday. Uh, and then uh, I went to uh, what should I call it? I uh, went there on a uh, basically what was a college trip because it was like we need to go get some photographs, guys. We're all going to go to Blackpool, pile into a coach, go to Blackpool, get some photographs, and I just used my lunch break to go to the arcades and play Outrun Two, which was a better use of uh, my lunch break than anyone else. Oh god, what the hell is going on? It's weird, it doesn't usually do this. Maybe I accidentally activated a setting and screwed something up. It's probably that. It might be the widescreen, actually. I have widescreen enabled for this game, and that could be screwing something up. I wouldn't be surprised if they were planning to port this game to PC. Okay then. God, I really wish it wasn't doing that flickering. That is throwing me off.
One thing that does bug me is that the PS3 and Xbox Live ports of Daytona never got released on Steam. It feels like that it's basically a shoe in. Whoa, Jesus. It feels like that should have been a shoe in for a PC port at this point, and it just never was. And while I don't mind using the emulator now, particularly because we've got the Nisha gone, it just would have been nicer to play them on with uh, all the extra options that they added to the XBLA port. I'm going to assume I enabled the new 3D engine or something, and maybe that has some compatibility issues. Oh, I got pretty close. That's probably the closest I've come to beating that level. When's Outrun? Good question. I should probably play Outrun. Could have gone better, but to be honest, I was just really thrown off by the weird flickering shit. Right, I don't think I actually um, have a shortcut for Sega Rally set, so I'll just quickly go set it up. Do, 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 do. I was doing this like at 3 a.m. last night, just making shortcuts for the games. And in the end, I was just faffing around with the icons for so long that I just didn't manage to get everything done. Okay, that's rally2.zip. Res equals 1, 2, 80. Oh, come on. Yeah, you need to do a uh, supermodel setup on the command line, which is kind of stupid, but whatever. I could drive better, Mr. Cat, but where's the fun in that? Okay, I actually need to wait for Sega Rally 2's um, thing to display. I'm not sure if Daytona 2 uses the same engine as Sega Rally 2, but I think it uses the same engine as Scud Race. So yeah, this is Sega Rally 2. I am very bad at this game, as you're going to see. If you thought I was bad at Daytona, man, you have not seen shit. I think this is Junsa Nui on guitar. Certainly sounds like him. Yeah, I've heard the Dreamcast port of Sega Rally 2 is kind of naff, although I do think they added a lot of content. Junsa Nui's non-Sonic works are really great because a lot of the time he, they trend towards the more SA2 nature, which I don't like Sonic Adventure too much, but I do love its music, and yeah, a lot of it. His work on uh, Dengeki Bunko, Fighting Climax, that was really good, his Sonic track for that. And, I mean, NASCAR Arcade soundtrack is basically legendary. Ugh. When's the Dengeki Bunko uh, Fighting Climax stream? I would like to stream that game, and the PS4 has a native one. A frame rate unlock is in the Dreamcast port as a cheat code. That's... Hmm. That actually happened... There was an unlockable track in the original Gran Turismo that, lets, that puts a frame rate up to 60. Like a high spec mode, and also Ridge Racer Type 4 comes with a 60 FPS version of the original Ridge Racer. Why am I not streaming Denbeck Geki Bunko Fighting Climax? I was gonna say I can't, but I can because the PS4 has a built in uh, streaming. What I should do is I should get a bunch of friends and stream Tekken 7. I actually bought the uh, Japanese only PS4 update of uh, Dengeki Fighting Climax uh, Ignition. And I haven't actually played it much, it's just there because, hey, you never know. Well, because I like playing other Sega arcade games, Mr. Cat, like Sega Rally. 
Although, to be fair, Dengeki Bunko does have Tiger in it, which is a pretty convincing argument. See, Tekken 7 doesn't have Tiger, but I guess you could technically customise one of the characters to look like Tiger. Uh, that's, I made a, I made a, a Lucky Chloe costume that was supposed to be like Arla. I always fail on this stage, despite the fact I love it. So, yeah. Hey, it's a Miku number. I actually watched a playthrough of this on, uh, I think it was the Dreamcast version, and I was just like, oh wow, I really do suck at Sega Rally, because they were just absolutely crazy. What happened to the Sega Rally episode of This Is Saturn? I just left Sega bits. <laughs> I think that's what happened to it anyway. Did I do Sega Rally? I can't remember. Um, it's been so long since I did This Is Saturn. It's like, I could barely remember what episodes I did and didn't do. I think what I was planning to do for, um, whatchamacallit, what I think I was planning to do for um, This Is Rally, uh, This Is Saturn Sega Rally was I got the Saturn version, and then I was like, oh wait, they made the Plus Edition in Japan, didn't they? I should get the Plus Edition. And then I just never got the Plus Edition, and then my capture card died, and then a whole bunch of other shit happened, and I was just like, fucking, I'm, I'm leaving Sega bit. I'm glad people still remember this is Saturn fond, though. It was, it was fun to work on. The first season was very... It was like a symbol of a... Uh... Yeah, I probably promoted uh, This Is Saturn a bit towards the end and then just completely failed to deliver. And that was my fault, I just didn't know what was going on at the time and my capture card was being a pain in the ass. I could have just... Uh, nowadays what I would do is I would just suck it up and emulate and just get the footage from the emulator. Getting the footage was the main thing that killed This Is Saturn. Because it was just like, my capture card... I. What happened was, I spilled coke on my capture device one day, and it still worked, kind of, just not as well. <sighs> oh my god, I actually did it. Hey, that's not too bad. It's not great, but better than I usually do. Oh, I got to do donuts. It's not too bad. Yeah, Kenji Ino did the music for this game, some of it. AKA the guy who made D&D &D 2. And many other games, like Enemy Zero. That's pretty cool, I always forget about that. Produced by Tetsuya Mizuguchi. <laughs> when my brother saw that, he just kind of he just looked in in horror, like, "What? What? They got Mizuguchi to do this game?" And I was like, "Yeah, man. Wow, I probably should have put my name in, huh?" Oops. Best game over sound. Okay. I know what's next. I forgot about it momentarily, which is why I actually did Scud Race. I mean, Sega Rally first. Scud P. Don't zip. My mouse is being really finicky today.
This game is classified as... Oh, yeah, there you go. Remember, kids. Winners don't use drugs. Oh, I've got the English setting on, so it's Sega Super G time. This is a Scud Race Plus. It was never actually... Uh, it was never released in um, Japan, in America or anything. Uh, but there's a translation, because... Scud Race was released in America as Sega Super Gito because Scud, Scud missiles, you know. So, um, Scud Race Plus was never released in America, but they actually bothered translating it. It just never got released. The more you know. I think I use the McLaren. This game is basically unplayable with an Xbox controller. You basically need a wheel for this game on emulator. And we're off. You'll notice the wheel jumps a bit when you turn it. The Nijikon has a bit of a dead zone, like a hardware dead zone. I know there's programs to alleviate that, but um, I just couldn't get them working. When's Toy Racer? Well, maybe in a minute. And by that I mean just the level in this. Whoa. It's simplistic, but he gets the job done. Sonic's actually on that barrier there, and he's got peach legs for some reason. It makes me uncomfortable. There's actually two Sonic cameos in this level. You can see some modified Sonic screensaver artwork on this corner. Whoa, and I didn't hear you to hit on the grass. Oh, shit. I've never seen Scud race in the wild. Um, I wasn't even aware it got a European release, to be honest. Honestly, that grass, uh, hitting the grass on that corner though, probably screwed me up for the rest of this race, but whatever. I can pretty consistently beat the um, night time. What the hell? I just phased through that car. I can pretty consistently beat the night time uh, beginner course. But not in a good place or anything. I still finished like ninth, ironically. Okay, we should have plenty of time. Unless I hit the wall. That was that. Even with a wheel, Scud Race is pretty difficult. Man, my hand. Like I said, this was on your thumb like a pain in the ass. Yeah, it uses a... It uses a... The same engine as Daytona 2, I think. In terms of graphics, but mechanically it feels completely different. And I think, uh, according to uh, Marubaku, who did the Daytona 2 guides, there was a lot of uh, angry sentiment. Oop. There was a lot of angry sentiment towards Daytona USA uh, 2 at first because it handles more like uh, handles more like Scud Race than it does the original Daytona USA. People got used to it, but not much, which is why Daytona 2 is a lot rarer than Daytona 1 and a lot less revered. Oh yeah, I've been messing with the test setting, so this has five laps. Oops. Oh, damn, I love this soundtrack.
Probably should have played in the Ferrari to be honest. It probably has better acceleration. Whoa. Mr. Cat, if you're tired, you gotta go sleep. The idea of Daytona 2 being replaced by Daytona 3 makes me incredibly sad. Because I haven't played Daytona 3, but it doesn't. It's not Daytona 3, they renamed it. They, they just made it more obvious it was a remake. Like I said, I'm crap at Daytona 2, but I do love it. it. I love what it represents. And it was more of an evolution for the series than Daytona 3 ever will. Friggin' mobile game looking ass. But it's like... I don't, I don't think I hate Daytona 3 as a concept. I, it is a remake, but with Daytona USA machines whirring out, and the only real alternative at that point being rebranding more Sega Racing Classic machines or I, I can I can see why they might have wanted to remake it and they have implemented feedback like adding a proper gear shifter now like there's new versions of the machine that have been showing at Expos where it actually has a proper gate shifter so I can applaud them for taking on feedback at the least That wasn't the worst thing ever. I mean, yeah, it plays the exact if it plays the exact same as the original Daytona USA, I don't really see the issue with it to be honest. It's, it's pretty harmless. It's not a sequel, but to be fair, they did change the name to make it obvious that okay, yeah, we fucked up. It's not a sequel. And even though the new tracks are just mirrored tracks, it's like I can't really be angry at them for doing something different with the mirror tracks. At least it's something different to look at. Right, I'm just going to go quickly check something, and I'll be right back. And we're back. Okay. This is a new track that was added for Scud Race Plus. Someone said to use the Dodge Viper. Okay, Andrew, we'll use the Dodge Viper. I've never actually used this car, so I'm probably going to be crap. <laughs> Mostly because I'm just like, go always go high speed, man. Ooh. That sounds mean. Sonic Trouble, I remember that game. I uh, played it on N64. Whoa. Yeah, this was already a bad decision. So yeah, this is the uh, new track that they added to um, Scud Race Plus. You may notice the, all these toy cars and stuff, and yeah. The idea is you're driving around a big living room and these are all the toys and there's a giant cat and stuff. I suppose in a sense this is pretty similar to a toy racer. A hell of noises. Uh... Yeah, I only played the N64 version when it was uh, when I was like what 
10, probably not even 10, probably 7. Uh, it's because my uh, my uh, uncle and aunt, they had an N64. And so I played like Banjo-Tooie when I was little and all that. And then I got my own N64 from them like 10 years later. <laughs> and they got Ocarina of Time for it, I'm just like... I don't like Ocarina of Time, but I have to treasure this now because it's Ocarina of Time on the N64 in box. For a second there it looked like first place had just come to a complete stop. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. You can change which which seat you're viewing it from. Didn't have a notice though. At least I'm setting new records though. Oh, whoops. Right, one thing I'm just quickly gonna try. Wrong one. Wrong one. I think it's the uh, it's the end one in it. No, it's not the end one. Uh, not doing very well at this, am I? Okay, so it's just yeah, the dodge vibe. There we go. So yeah, if you press start while you're selecting a car on the super beginner track, you get this. Hey look, it's Mr. Cat. He's a playable character in this game. In car view, man. Yeah, so the idea with this is the cat is like, the handling on it is ridiculous. It's like, the grip cars in Ridge Racer. So basically you don't even need to drift, you just... Maybe I should just like, zoom out. So yeah, consider this the uh, continuation of the ridiculous horse stuff in Daytona USA. Oh, the best part is the start is a meow button. Hooray for meow buttons. Oh, strike. Cool. Ah. But yeah, there's uh, several different unlockable cars for this level, and they all have, like, different things. So like, the car, if you press start, it meows. The rocket car can do a turbo boost. Because of course it can. You know, I probably would have won this if it weren't for the uh, crash I made at the beginning. Yeah, just hitting the back of cars ruins me. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a cat. <laughs> he even has his own little flag. Okay, just I'll show one of the other bonus cars just cause. Which one was the rocket car? It's gonna be this one, isn't it? Yeah. Just for the sake of being different, we'll do it on time, though. Yeah, so if the McLaren is high speed, this is ultra speed. Which the result basically means it's, it's completely uncontrollable. Three, two, one, 
Yeah. I think you get like three boosts per race, and if you can actually control this thing. Okay. The moral of the story is more speed is not necessarily better. There are actually hacks to put these uh, cars into the other uh, tracks, but it's just. Is my stream buffering for everyone else? It might just be the internet on your end, but if not, then I'll load the bit right. If the stream's buffering a lot, I'll load the bit right. You, you get the idea. The, this car is not doing jack shit. Let me have a look. Uh, I think. That's all of the racing games. Uh, let me see. No, there is one more. But I can't believe I forgot. You only get three uses of the rocket. Uh, okay. Who's ready for an incredibly weird one? And fitting considering what Sega announced barely a week ago. This is a real game. And the dead. My internet might have just been having an episode then. I will no longer be the king of Outrun 2. I bet they wipe the machines. The idea of Mr. Cat causing uh, buffering does not surprise me. So yeah, we're an ambulance driver. It's like Crazy Taxi, except you've got a patient. Ooh. Honestly, I'm terrible at this game. Oh, and it lags. Uh, this game has lag issues, yeah. Forgot to mention that. I like how that one just kind of falls into a... Uh, into the water. Like that poor kid's family. Yeah, okay, this kid's probably not going to survive. Yeah, he's not surviving. Oh. I like how they translate what the dog said. So that's an emergency call ambulance, it's a bit of a weird one. I'm just gonna try something now because I haven't I haven't tried this before, so it probably won't work. But can I get Outrun 2 working? Because if I do, then I guess I know what we're playing next. If I can even remember where it is. Um Games Outrun 2. Go on, let's see if this works. If it does, I'll be over the moon. Yes, yes, yes. Oh crap, it's not in a window. Um, I'll just give it a go. Config. Can I set the settings here? 
won't let me take it out of full screen. That's inconvenient. Maybe it will in the game. If not, then we can't play Outrun. But it's worth a try. Hang on. Okay, well, it's recognised the controller, it's recognised the D-pad. Uh, it's recognising certain bits. Settings... no. Right, that will work outside of this, but it, I don't know how to get it out of a uh, windowed mode, so it's not going to work, though. Uh, I, don't, I never go to a pleasure beach, which is why I never see the uh, Daytona thing. I mean, the Ridge Racer thing. Uh, right, I know what I was going to do next. Probably going to end the stream after this, but I am going to quickly hop over to MAME. Okay, window capture, you can return now. Boom, we're back. Only took me like half a friggin' year. It's Virtua Racing. I only played this with the uh, Nishikon like once, so we'll see how it goes. Jesus Christ, that's loud. And then the music just cuts out, because that's how virtual racing is. So yeah, here's the uh, predecessor to Daytona USR. Virtual racing. The last level of emergency call ambulance is incredible. A president with an ungodly uh, face. Uh, his friggin' airplane crashes, and he has to get the president's hospital. God damn hilarious. And they just skirt around the fact it's obviously just a parody of Bill Clinton. I actually own two console ports of Virtual Racing. I own the Mega Drive version and I own the 32X version. I don't own the Saturn version because I heard it was absolutely terrible. But I've heard conflicting things about the Saturn port of Virtual Racing, so maybe I should give it a go. I don't actually own a 32X to play the that version on, so that's kind of tragic. I almost bought a 32X once, but I bought my Japanese Saturn instead, and to be honest, that was probably the best idea, but still. I do kind of regret it, because it's only 80 quid, and there's a Japanese one. I think this game is pretty fun. I don't really play it much, to be honest, because obviously you got Daytona right there. It's like...
Oh, whoops. Final stretch. Eh, hey, not bad. I think that's the first time I've ever actually beaten that level in the arcade version. Second place isn't bad either. Let's go with... Oh god, this steering is too sensitive. Okay, I'm just gonna end it. So yeah, that was virtual racing. That game's pretty fun. I think I'm going to leave it there for today. I'll try and get some more games rigged up to work with the uh, recording software and stuff soon. I just, uh, I should have done it beforehand, I just didn't think ahead. And, well, I was mostly just going to focus on uh, these games anyway. Although actually, actually, I think I can think of one more game to try. I just need to get the controller for it. And conveniently, that's right here. And we're out. So I've been playing Sega Arcade games, and there's been a few cameos in a, a few of them. But if we can get this working, then we'll be golden. Just need to go open DS4 Windows. There we go. Yes. Okay then, let's see if this works. I have virtual. oh whoa whoa whoa, that's weird. Um, I have virtual. um, whatchamacallit, I have Virtua Fighter 2 for uh, Saturn, it's a good port. Let me see, there we go. Yep, that's showing up, cool cool cool. So yeah, final game for now. I think I've configured this. That or I just completely balls up my uh, folder since I last played it. We're gonna find out. It's Sega Sonic Arcade! Let's move the screen a bit. Forewarning, this is not going to be particularly good gameplay. Trying to emulate the, uh... Trying to emulate the controls for, uh... This with an actual gamepad is not impossible. No, I think a lot of it might just factor into the fact it was supposed to be hard anyway. It's an arcade game, and the trackball setup probably isn't actually very accurate itself. I should probably just buy a cheap trackball, and then just play it for this. I really love the animations in this, I feel they look really great. God damn, I love those animations. I ain't getting any awards for getting rings, I can tell you that much. <laughs> there is actually an arcade in uh, London that has one of these machines, it's just that someone dickhead spilled coke on it, so... Uh, I think it's kinda busted, can't remember if they fixed it.
I have never played this game with a trap ball. I probably should have by now. Again, I doubt trap balls are actually that expensive if you just get a dead cheap one. And it's not like I'd be using it for much, so I probably could. Come on. There we go. That's a weirdly uh, over drawn way to just put me back at the start. Come on. I'm surprised how well I managed to get this working with control, to be honest. It's not actually terrible. It's kind of playable. I should probably upload a new run through to my YouTube at some point. Oh, come on, that wasn't too bad. I like how those Eggman icons for the, for the map were actually reused in Sonic Mania. The, the uh, icons that appear when Eggman uses his machine, uh, uses his uh, missiles. I think they definitely have really good machines at the heart of gaming. I've just never been because I'm too far away. And also, when I did go to London, they were closed, so I kind of sucked. The sprite effects here are really cool. Oh dear. That is one persistent tornado. Fun fact, I believe Sonic is voiced by the voice actor who did Trunks in Dragon Ball Z in this game. There's definitely some uh, Dragon Ball voice actor in it. Every single House of the Dead. I think my favourite House of the Dead is actually House of the Dead 3. This song is awesome. Whoa. I really love the sprite effects in this game, and just in most of Sega arcade games of this time. Oh dear. Oops. I believe you can actually break those things for rings, but it's kind of pointless. Same with those. Boom. There's actually a, um... There's actually a uh, prototype of this game available on the web, and I have it. And it's weird, because they actually cut out some really cool stuff. There were actually proper zone transitions and everything in the uh, prototype, but they got cut out the final version for some reason. Like, originally Sonic stayed on those blocks, and it was like a lift that took him up to the next level. So it was like Sonic 3 and Knuckles, in a sense. And I don't know why they removed those. Maybe I'll play it quickly if I have time.
<sighs> okay. Let's go. Boom. The Sonic's animations in this are so good. Okay then. Oh. Oh no. That, that's clever. It's a fake wall. Or rather, a fake bit of scene. Huh? That's the first time I've ever beaten that boss without being killed at least five times. You know, a one credit clear of this game would be feasible. Oh! Shit, that's the first time I've ever actually gotten that bonus. Yeah, a one credit clear would be of this game would be pretty feasible if it weren't for this level. Wild Waterway. This level is shit, particularly because it's on uh, the controls here with the uh, analog pad. Because you just can't do precise platforming with these controls and that's what this level asks for. To be honest, it's probably like that in the original too. Oh well, now you can kill those things. Whoa. Oh, what those things hurt on contact? Okay, now for the sucky bit. Yeah, you just you you can't do this section. It's nigh impossible. Oops. Screw you, precise platforming. Okay, well that could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, a lot of the time you're just basically playing pinball with the physics. And it's not very fun. I guess a one credit clear with the pad could be feasible, but you'd have to be get really lucky on that level. <laughs> so, final level, Eggman's Tower. Let's go. I'm sure I'll screw up the final run at the end, somehow. Ow. Eggman really likes ladders in this game.
Oh, get him. Yeah, this level's a little bit repetitive. Eggman's running animation is incredible. And we're done! That was Sega Sonic Arcade. Very short, simple game. Well, it's alright. Controls just aren't great. I don't think even having a trap ball would alleviate much of the pain that is Wild War. It's probably just there to, tea, to eat your credits. But yeah, that'll probably do it for this stream, to be honest. Um, I was only going to play a few racing games, so it was a bit of a bonus. I just noticed that that uh, artwork there actually has the flying squirrel flaps under uh, Ray's arm. As far as I'm aware, that's the only time he's ever been depicted with them. Otherwise, he just looks like a weird tails. <sighs> There's Naoto Shima's thanks. Those sprites though are really cool. So yeah, uh, that was Sega Sonic Arcade. Hope you all had fun watching this impromptu uh, Sonic stream. Well, <coughs> Sonic stream, arcade stream. And, uh, yeah, I'll do it again sometime. Probably when I've worked out how to get Outrun into windowed mode. In a bit, folks. <laughs>